actually learning once again. So, um, in the previous session, so we were discussing about uh, the chapter number 8 that is emotion. Now, today uh, we will be followed up by the next chapter that is the force and laws of motion. And uh, this chapter is very much related with the motion. So, uh, which is why I'm going to continue with the uh, next chapter of the physics that is force and laws of motion. So, uh, in the motion chapter, we talked about velocity, time, displacement, and acceleration. And uh, on the basis of that, we classified the motion in two types, that is uniform motion and non-uniform motion. So whenever there is an involvement of velocity, time and displacement, we used to call this as uniform motion. <laughs> right? The moment we are going to insert acceleration along with velocity, time and displacement, there is an another kind of motion that is non-uniform. <laughs> So, whole throughout the chapter of motion, we were discussing about a body or an object which is moving in a straight line. We were, we were not talking about uh, falling up from some certain kind of height or anything like that. But we were discussing about uh, an object which is moving in a straight line. So now, when we think about velocity, time and displacement and acceleration, we classify the motion into two types, that is uniform motion and non-uniform motion. So now, <clears throat> When we think about that, now that motion and uniform, one thing that comes to our mind is that this motion, whether it's a non-uniform motion or a uniform motion, what causes that motion? That's the question number one. What causes motion? And the question number two is, Whenever there is a non-uniform motion, for example, if an object changes its speed from one uh, point to another point, what causes that change in the speed? Right? Question number two is, what causes that change in speed? So when we think about that particular two questions here, what causes motion and what causes that change in the speed of the motion. When we think about these two questions, it is very important for us to study this particular chapter that is force and the laws of motion. Right? Okay, so <clears throat> So in our daily life we come across a many kind of activities like uh, Kicking the ball, mm -hmm. uh, let's say uh, falling on fruits, uh, open door, and the opposite of that closing door. If I keep on writing all these kind of activities, this blackboard is not sufficient enough for us to write all the activities, right? So now we know that <clears throat> falling of fruits, kicking the ball, opening of door, closing of door, all these are influenced by some external things here, external activity. External activity. Understand? So here, <clears throat> activities. External activity. Uh, for example, yeah, I cannot uh, open the door just by uh, thinking that uh, this door should open. Because in order to open the door, I have to do some external things there. Right? Uh, in order to uh, close the door, I also have to do some kind of external activities also. Right? In order to uh, fruit, in order for the fruits to come down from the tree, there should be some external things happening over there. Uh, in order to kick the ball also, there. Uh, in order to kick the ball you also need some kind of external activities, right? So that external activity, there were a lot of discussion about the external activities. What is that external activity we were talking about, right? So in, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, 3rd century BC, there was a guy, his name is Aristotle, right? He uh, made a very important conclusion 
before we talk about Aristotle, we just try to assume, okay, there's a ball, right? And this ball is moving, right? This is a ball, this ball is moving. Now we know that at a certain point, this ball is going to come at rest, right? This ball is going to come at rest at a certain point. So, having a close and look on whatever is happening within the earth, Aristotle, he concluded two things here. Number one, what he said. Any kind of object whose natural state is rest. Any kind of object. In the absence of application of any kind of external factors, rest is the natural state of all objects. For example, if we are going to leave a ball outside, if we are going to uh, leave any kind of like a table outside, we are not going to do influence any kind of external activities on them, then this object is going to stay at rest. This was uh, though you might think that this is a very simple thing, but this uh, has this was like known by first made out by Aristotle himself, right? And secondly, what he said, Here. And second one, what he said, in order for that particular object to move, there should be application of some external activities, right? And this act external activity is what we used to call as force. <laughs> understand? This external activity is what we used to call as force. Do you understand? So with this, we are going to start with the chapter force and laws of motion, right? Okay. <clears throat> So speaking about force, force, right? Force. What is force? We had defined in class eight. Force is defined as push or pull of an object. Push or pull of an object. But I think this definition is not enough for us to understand the proper definition of force, right? So how, what, what, what else we are going to insert in that? Push or pull of an object resulting, resulting from its interaction. any kind of push or pull, there should be some sort of interaction between two particular objects because in the absence of that, we won't be able to apply any kind of force in that, right? So, <clears throat> for example, again, I will just write, uh, there is a person, he is applying some force on a table. He is applying some force. In order to push that particular table in that direction, what is needed is there should be an interaction between this table and this particular person there. In that way, push can happen. In order for me to push a table, what is important is that there should be interaction between me and the table in order for pull to happen, right? So push or pull of an object resulting from its interaction with another object, that is very, very important, right? Okay. So now there are many guys like who have talked about force. So one of the first person, to talk about the force and do an experiment on force, his name is Galileo, right? Uh, what is 
studying Galileo Galilei. Okay, I, I don't remember. Uh, you can just have a check on Galileo Galilei, okay? His name. But uh, we are more concerned about what experiment he has done, Galileo, right? He has done an experiment on an inclined plane. Galileo experiment. On inclined plane. Now here, what is the meaning of incline? Incline means something like this here, right? Incline. Incline means something like this kind of structure here, where it, any kind of object will roll down here, like this here. Understand? So this guy, Galileo, <coughs> maybe uh, in 16th century or something, he did a really beautiful experiment, okay? And he gave one conclusion from that. And uh, that conclusion is very much related with our lesson, right? Okay, so <coughs> in his experiment, what he said was, he used some inclined plane, right? Okay, so I'm going to use a different set of chalk for you to understand it better. This is an inclined plane. <coughs> understand? And before understanding his experiment, what is important for us to know is that if there is a ball here, uh, let's say a marble. This is a marble here. A marble here, right? If a marble is allowed to move down or allowed to roll down through this inclined plane, what will happen to the velocity of the marble? The velocity will increase when you roll it down. Because we know that in an inclined plane, it the, uh, the marble has a more ability to move in a more higher kind of velocity there. So whenever this particular marble rolls down to an inclined plane, the velocity always increases. Velocity increases. Yeah. Right? In this case. Now, if a marble is allowed to roll up on an inclined plane, what will happen to the velocity? The velocity will always decreases. Velocity decreases. This is something we, we should know it and we knew it normally in our life. Because it becomes very easy for us to travel down the slope. Uh, if we have to move up the slope, naturally our velocity is going to decrease, right? So let's go for it. <clears throat> what actually he was trying to say? What he did, he made use of two kind of inclined plane, right? Okay. This is one inclined. Okay. Now, these two inclined plane, they are of similar height. Understand? This and that. Uh, let me just name this as A and this is B. Same size, same height and everything. What we are going to do or do is that a marble is allowed to roll from here. Right? So, in the observation from this one, observation, right? From this particular two inclined plane observing, uh, experiment, what he observed was that when he allowed one marble to roll down from this point here, that is the point tip over here, this marble naturally travels down here and it goes up here and goes to the similar kind of height here. That is, the marble is going to come to this level over here. That means, <clears throat> observation number one, marble reaches same height this marble when it moves from this point to that point from this height to that height this marble reaches the same height over here now it is natural for us to assume that if the marble covers from here to that point here then this marble let's suppose imagine okay, this marble is of like uh, distance between this two point is like five centimeter then we can somehow assume that this is also five centimeter because these two are same 
right? So we do this. What we came to know is that this model covers same distance. Covers same distance. To reach the same height. Okay? This was the first one in climb thing. Now secondly, what he did <clears throat> Secondly, what he did here He's going to keep this one straight here The same one, the previous one That is the inclined plane number A Okay Now, in the case of 2 here Let's try to see here There is an angle here <clears throat> One angle here And there is another angle over here this angle is what we normally used to call as angle of inclination, right? Okay, let's suppose imagine this is <clears throat> previously over here. This is like maybe I'm just assuming it, maybe like 60 degree or something, right? This could be 60. Now, in that case, the angle of inclination is 60, same because both are same. Now, in the second one, what Galileo changed was what he did here. He reduced, decreased the angle. Understand? He decreased the angle. Is that clear? Over here is 60. Now over here maybe like 35 degrees something. Let's suppose. And uh, okay, it should reach the same kind of height here. Okay. Okay, fine. So now in the second one, what he did again, a marble was released from here. And down the inclined plane, the marble moved with a high velocity, then it started to climb up here. And it reached the same height here. But what is the strange thing about this one? Though the marble has started from this point here and it has reached this point, but if you see the distance between this and that, it's totally different here. So, in the second observation here, observation, what he observation, what he noticed that this time the marble is curving more amount of distance to reach the same height. Okay? This time, marble covers more distance more distance from here to this point here more distance here you can see identify over here maybe five centimeters now this could be like eight or nine centimeters something right suppose right more distance more distance for what to reach the same height to reach see This is the second one. Now the third one here. Again, what he did. This is the inclined plane. Okay, same inclined plane with an angle of 60 degree, I suppose. And now with the next one, what he did. This angle, he further decreased that to zero angle here. Now in this case here, zero angle. That means there is no. Now this. This incline, the angle between these two is zero. Zero means like this here. So what he did, he again rolled down a marble from here. Now what will happen? You somehow know it. Naturally, this marble is going to roll down. Is it possible for this marble to reach the same height like this incline chain over here? It's not possible because it's on a horizontal way here. So looking at this observation again. Okay, Galileo, like he concluded that, right? He made the third observation. I'm sorry, can, uh, he made the third observation. In the third observation, what he noticed was that observation I'll write here. Observation. Now in this case, let's suppose imagine this could be somewhere over here. You are, so, uh, you are sure, right? Suppose imagine. 
could be somewhere over here. You are, so, uh, you are sure, right? You are sure that if we do this in a practical level, so we will see the same kind of result here. In this way, this is going to cover a lot of distance here now, over here. A lot of distance, we know that. It will travel, right? It will travel and travel until and unless the frictional force will stop this particular ball at a certain point here. Now we try to see the distance between these two here. This is like 5 cm. Now can you imagine how much is a like, centimeter in that case here? It's a very, very, uh, what do you call it? More distance over here. So, model covers, now the third one. Great distance. Great distance. And it's impossible to reach the same height. To reach the same height. Is that clear? Now, in this case here, this model is going to stop at some point here. Now, let us imagine for a time being, right? Let's say, suppose if there is no air resistant, right? If there is no, I'm going to write here. If there is no air resistant, for example, when I move in this direction, there are a literally a little amount of air which is going to stop me from moving, right? Let's say. Uh, if there is no pressure force Understand? Here, for example, uh, what is the friction force? Uh, friction force is a force which is acting opposite to the direction of the motion Let's suppose imagine, to this ball here, this ball Suppose imagine There is no friction That means it's moving in a very smooth Where the friction is almost equal to zero There is no friction and secondly, there is no air resistance. Now what will happen to the ball? This model here. It will move on forever and ever and ever. Right? It will not stop. Let us imagine in a, uh, what do you call it? space where there is like no friction, no air. We keep up, uh, we uh, move an object, right? Let's suppose imagine, I, throw, I threw a chop in a space. This chop is going to move forever, forever. Unless someone is going to hold this chalk in a space, but right? it will move on forever. In the same way, what this ball, this model is going to do is that, in the absence of air, in the absence of air resistant and the frictional force, this model is going to roll down forever, forever. So with this, he came to one conclusion. That conclusion is very important for us to know that, right? So what was the conclusion? We are going to discuss here. We are going to. I'm going to write on top here. Okay, so his conclusion, Galileo's conclusion. What was Galileo's conclusion? Galileo's conclusion was any kind of object, that is every object, every object, every object, that could be table, that could be ball, that could be anything which is available on this earth has its own natural tendency, natural tendency. Tendency. Tendency means ability. Uh, in our Tibetan language, every object, whether that object could be any kind of thing, had its own natural tendency. Galileo's conclusion was based upon absence of air resistance and frictional force. He confirmed that every object, any kind of object, has its own natural tendency or ability to move or to stray or to stay at rest. And this particular ability or the natural tendency is what we used to call as inertia. This is what we used to call as inertia. Is that clear? Did you understand the conclusion of? Because 
Galileo was making this conclusion on the basis of his own experiment. When he rolled down the marble, what he saw was this marble was stopping at some point here. This was his observation, right? But he imagined that if he had made a situation where the whole experiment is conducted in air resistant and frictional force, then this ball is going to roll down forever and forever. That means this ball has its own ability to roll down forever and ever. This is what we used to call as inertia. Understand? For example, here, uh, there is a rock on top here. Understand? Uh, can we say that this particular rock has some sort of like ability to stay at rest? Yeah, we can. We can say it. For example, okay, uh, does this rock have certain sort of energy involved in that? Yes, because the moment this rock is going to fall down, it is going to cause a lot of destructions in that. Right? So we can somehow understand that this particular stationary object has its own in, uh, ability or own tendency to stay at rest. Understand? Is that clear? That tendency or the ability is what we call as inertia. Is that clear? So uh, uh, tomorrow onwards, we are going to move forward with another part here regarding the inertia and all of this, right? So uh, today we were discussing about force, getting on the force with the new case and you want to Galileo the experiment, force on the chita ki on the kalore, external activity chika lavore, rua, and the external activity the nam yudu on the hard chala ye ki interaction the basis on chumre lavore. Now, the jala on the Galileo for the experiment the inclined plane, rua, inclined plane ni hikala for the experiment chini, for the observation chishu to cut rava ina, kisi kang ni chala chi rua, kang tango ina, mabo chi. And the like is it can be air resistant and frictional force chain never in a ditch of the stop cranky garden or shut that do the video in a massive and the tongue the bolt in you were a bolt just in turn room to the position of both the garden door curtain covered as the teller is a girl both the people are yellow friction than the stop she will work this thing on to the shallow page of friction zero chicken you can both the minor more the shiny do the continuously do the video what did it do? They have new body laws of the inertia law. So, inertia is the concept of the new law and Galileo gave conclusion to the new law. Thank you.